So, uh, in the last class, uh, we have uh, talked about the Ken Milley model, but I have uh, gone a little fast there uh, in order to, you know, finish up the calculation of the Z2 invariant, which we have done it um, uh, quite extensively. Uh, so, right now, uh, we will uh, rerun uh, some of the discussions that we already had and uh, talk about the model a little more and show some of the results that we can get from the model. Okay. So, uh, we start with this uh, again with the Kane Milley Hamiltonian. Um, I have already told that there are uh, certain features that are distinct from the Holden model and we will again uh, come to that in just a while. Uh, so, the first term is uh, the first term is the tight binding term which is there in graphene. Uh, this is the really the Holden term and I have said this that you can use either a T2 or a lambda SO there. Uh, mostly in literature it is used as lambda SO, so I have written it as lambda SO and this is the semen of uh, term which uh, opens up a gap uh, of trivial nature at uh, the Dirac points. Okay. So, uh, it is a simple model which is two copies of the Holden model and that is why it is written as Holden square uh, and it conserves um, the SZ component uh, or uh, uh, Z component of the spin uh, angular momentum. and um, I have written it with a capital SZ, but sometimes in literature it is uh, written with a small SZ. So, here SZ denotes the Z component of the true spin or the, uh, the actual electronic spin. Uh, so, this has been told that uh, the uh, spin up, uh, the up spin particles uh, which correspond to a Holden model with a flux uh, phi equal to pi by 2. You remember the flux uh, comes from these. Uh, the second neighbor hopping which is uh, exponential i phi and then of course, so one has a c i dagger c j. Now, this is a second neighbor. So, we write it with a i j or you can write it just in case you are not comfortable with i j because that is used for the nearest neighbor as we have done it for the first time. Uh, you can use a i k also. So, uh, instead of a j one can use a k just to make sure that that is a the next nearest neighbor and not the nearest neighbor. We have shown this uh, picture uh, many times and uh, similarly for the spin down electrons, it is another Holden model and uh, with us, uh, this uh, flux equal to minus pi by 2. So, there is a flux pi by 2 for the up spin and minus pi by 2 for the down spin and this is exactly what is written here. And um, uh, it takes a block diagonal term where uh, the upper block on the left is for the up spin and uh, for the lower block down spin. Each one of them, each of H up and H down like a 2 by 2 Hamiltonian of the Dirac form. Uh, what I mean by Dirac form is that it can be written as d dot sigma. Okay. And the Hamiltonian has time reversal symmetry now, which we have discussed uh, elaborately. Okay. Now, uh, there is another term that is added, uh, which is called as a Rashba spin orbit coupling. Uh, we will uh, do a little discussion on that in just a while. And uh, the term is written as I lambda r and uh, there is a C i dagger and uh, these um, uh, sigma across D i j will uh, tell you what D i j is. D i j is actually a unit vector that uh, connects to the site uh, from site i to a nearest neighbor site j and of course, the rest of the things are all same. Now, this uh, creates one um, complication, additional complication which is what we have uh, seen here. Uh, the Hamiltonian no longer remains as block diagonal as you can see here. Okay. Uh, there are off diagonal elements in this 4 by 4 uh, Hamiltonian that arise and um, it does not have this uh, you know block structure that you uh, see here. Okay. Uh, now, how do I get this term and uh, you know how uh, this thing uh, comes into picture is what we will see. And um, so, some of the results uh, are same uh, with and without uh, the Rashba spin orbit coupling, uh, though they are quantitatively different and uh, uh, will have uh, uh, large application in terms of spintronics if we apply or rather include this term. 
And as I said earlier, this term is quite possible uh, in a two dimensional, perfectly two dimensional system, which our graphene is uh, because there is an inversion symmetry uh, breaking happening there, uh, which will give rise to an electric field and this um, uh, the spin will couple to the electric field and so on. Okay, we will just come to that in just a while. And uh, we get spin filtered 8 states uh, because of this term that we see here and um, there are uh, these spin currents that will be there and um, uh, one gets a quantum spin hall phase uh, which is observed in the system and uh, there is a, a quantized hall conductance in the spin sector which we call it as quantum spin hall conductance as opposed to the charge hall conductance which is equal to 0 here. It is 0 because uh, the system has time reversal symmetry and uh, we have shown that how the system has time reversal symmetry earlier. Uh, so, the spin hall conductance is quantized uh, at a value which is E over 2 pi. Uh, let me uh, try to uh, derive this term that you see here uh, the lambda r term and um, this is like uh, how this uh, sigma cross d i j and the z component of that come is what is important. I mean uh, you have to take a note of this z component because uh, uh, we are writing a Hamiltonian whose eigenvalues will give energies. So, uh, it cannot be just a vector. So, it will have a scalar and that z component makes it a scalar. Okay. So, uh, we write down the uh, wave function in the vanier basis. Okay. And uh, the wave function is of this form where uh, these ci's are the operators and these uh, w's are the uh, the vanier wave functions and uh, the vanier functions are localized at uh, some uh, sites which are given by this ri. These uh, obey the orthonormality condition which is given by this equation. So, let us call this as equation 1 and this as equation 2. So, uh, it is clear that it is w star which is a vanier function r i minus r and the r j minus r where i and j are different sites will be equal to 0 and if uh, i and j are same then that will uh, lead to the normalization of the vanier functions. Okay. Now, um, this is well known that uh, when you want to write derivatives uh, on a lattice uh, one does it like this that uh, so it is uh, f prime of x is equal to f of x plus h uh, minus f of x divided by h and limit h tends to 0. That is the definition that we have uh, learned probably in school. So, uh, there is these uh, vanier functions which are written at r i plus d site where d is the nearest neighbor site and taken a uh, uh, subtracted uh, the vanier function at the i th site and then because it is a it is a gradient. Uh, so, it should have a direction. So, this is that a d cap direction that is shown and divided by the d which is the length of the nearest neighbor vector okay, or the distance nearest neighbor distance. So, because gradient is a vector. So, that is this d cap which is in the direction connecting the two sides r i and r i plus d that is uh, shown here. So, this is the definition of momentum uh, or a gradient of a scalar function. Now, uh, why is that required? That is required because we need to write down the momentum, the operation of the momentum on the wave function and uh, this momentum is uh, uh, written as uh, minus i uh, h cross uh, del del x. Uh, so, for del del x there is a shorthand notation which is uh, del of x and we have taken h cross equal to 1 without any loss of generality. And this is equal to a c i and a w r i where c i is, a, is an operator uh, at the site i and that is the vanier function. So, uh, this can be written as uh, minus i and then now you apply the gradient operator just uh, from this equation 3 let us call that as equation 4. So, we apply the same thing. So, del del x is nothing but uh, say uh, something like a gradient vector and this gradient is written as uh, x cap dot you know uh, the gradient of w at r i. Now, this we already know from 3 
and uh, that can be expanded. Now, since we have a x cap here, you can write it as x cap as well. Uh, so, this is equal to uh, dx uh, by d square and, and so on. Okay. So, uh, that is exactly what we have done. Now, uh, this is no longer a vector uh, this quantity because you have dotted with a uh, x cap direction and this x cap comes because we have taken a px. It will be p y uh, we will uh, get a y cap here. So, what we land up with is an operator and then this dx over d square and these um, uh, the vanier functions at the or the difference between the vanier functions at the consecutive or the nearest neighbor sites. So, uh, we are ultimately you know uh, interested in a quantity like this which is psi dagger p x psi and uh, that is because that uh, would uh, you know be there in this kind of a term. So, uh, we are sort of trying to get that here. Now, ultimately this will be related to the to the form that we just got and then uh, we write down if you look at it carefully it is pretty easy. So, this is that C i dagger C j coming from the dagger is coming from psi dagger and uh, C j is coming from psi and then the P x operator is written here exactly in the same way that we have done it in equation 4. Let us call this as equation 5. So, now because of the orthonormality condition that is this and this will only survive uh, you know provided d connects to the nearest neighbor and uh, this with this will give you a 0 because that is the orthonormality coming uh, if i is not equal to j and of course i is not equal to j. So, this uh, left hand side that we have in equation 5 uh, has a form which is nothing but uh, this 6 uh, where this w star r i and w r j plus d will uh, give you 1 because of the normalization uh, where d connects to the neighboring sites and so on. So, uh, this uh, is a c i dagger c j and then the d x by d square and uh, the volume integral over r goes on to make uh, up for the, uh, the orthonormality condition. Okay? Uh, and similarly for p y 1 gets this uh, exactly the same. Uh, let us write it as 7 and then we have a d x over d square and a d y over d square and uh, so this is p x and p y that one gets here. Okay? And uh, of course, you do not see any p x and p y here, uh, but then uh, we will show that uh, this is really coming out uh, from a term like that. Okay? So, this is 6 and 7 make up for the two equations that we need for these uh, the expectation values of p x and p y. Now, this you know that the Rajba term is written as sigma x p y minus sigma y p x. Okay? Uh, this is basically the sigma cross p and uh, uh, the z component of that or you dotted with, uh, with a z. Okay? Uh, and this z is nothing but we uh, will tell you in a moment that it is nothing but the the electric field uh, direction of the electric field uh, which uh, occurs or rather which uh, arises because of uh, this a gradient of uh, the crystal potential. Okay? So, now uh, with all these things uh, we have a uh, uh, there is a dagger that is missed here. So, psi dagger and so on uh, this sigma x p y minus sigma y p x which is nothing but sigma cross p uh, the z component of that and a psi r. So, we get a c i dagger and a c j coming out from this and then a sigma x d y minus a sigma y d x exactly coming out from this and there is of course, a d square that comes out. Okay? And there is a i factor there and this gamma is simply nothing but either you call it a lambda r or something, but lambda r we are going to get it here. So, we sort of uh, wrote uh, a constant a coefficient of this uh, Rajpa term and uh, this is nothing but what we want. Okay? So, the Rajpa term indeed has a form. So, this one is what you start with and then you end up with a term that is like this and this is exactly what is uh, written here. Okay. This one needed a little bit of hand holding in order to uh, derive this form, but um, I sort of uh, wanted uh, not to uh, you know break the flow in calculation of the z2 invariant which is why I skipped it there, but now you have it here. Okay. And uh, this has already been shown 
that um, the in the momentum space the uh, Hamiltonian is written as this. Now, we of course, do not have uh, a block form. Uh, this is uh, a block here, this is a block here, but the blocks are being uh, mixed by these uh, off diagonal forms which are written in terms of uh, rho k and the rho k if you look at it here, it is purely coming out from the Rashba term. Okay. And uh, this is uh, a little lengthy derivation, but one should be able to do it uh, without much problem because uh, one just needs to Fourier transform each one of the terms that we have written in uh, the Hamiltonian that we have written here. Okay. So, this Hamiltonian, so this is the uh, most important equation and let us call it as a uh, capital one. Okay. And uh, so, this is uh, by Fourier transforming equation at capital one, okay, uh, and uh, the various other things which are there uh, written here, which is a uh, uh, xi k or uh, some. Uh, this is that uh, thing that is coming out here. Uh, that is here and um, the gamma k is also there which are uh, part of the uh, this is that nothing but the T 2 the Holden term. Uh, so, it is a, a spinful Holden term here and um, the kinetic energy term which is uh, there in graphene this is the tight binding kinetic energy that is given by the xi k, gamma k and rho k and this is the 4 by 4 Hamiltonian. You remember the Holden model was 2 by 2 because the spin was not taken into account it was only the sub lattice degrees of freedom and here of course, we have taken into account spin and that is why uh, the size of the Hamiltonian uh, now uh, have gone up and uh, it has become 4 by 4. And um, uh, these are some of the band structure plots of uh, these. Uh, so, once when uh, some uh, diagonalizes this Hamiltonian which can be done in a computer and then one get for various parameters. Now, you see that uh, we have shown it uh, explicitly for a few parameters which are given by lambda r equal to 0, lambda v equal to 0 which means it is only the graphene thing and there is no uh, lambda r or lambda v. And uh, then one has a, a sort of a touching Dirac points here and um, once when one uh, switches on a lambda r, then uh, there is the band still touch, but uh, the, the conduction band and the valence band they become spin resolved. So, the ones that you are seeing in blue and uh, red are spin resolved valence bands and these um, pink or something magenta and the green they correspond to the, the conduction bands uh, spin resolved conduction bands. Uh, when you put lambda v equal to 0, but lambda r not equal to 0, a trivial gap opens up at the Dirac points which is a known result. Now, if you have both not equal to 0 that is the Rajba term as well as the, the Semenov term not equal to 0, there is a gap as well as the spin split bands can be seen. Okay. This is exactly what is written there. So, these are uh, numerical calculations that are emerging out from this uh, from this uh, dispersion or this Hamiltonian that comes out here. Okay. Let me do a little discussion on the Rashba term. Okay. A brief discussion has uh, already been done. Uh, this is little more to supplement that and so on. So, when you have a charged particle uh, with a velocity v uh, moving with a velocity v in a magnetic in a region where there is a magnetic field b, uh, there is a low range force uh, on the uh, charged particle. So, the low range force is given by uh, f l and which is equal to a minus v e uh, v cross b. So, v is the velocity and b is the magnetic field and um, uh, because uh, it also has spin which is now we have to necessarily include spin in our discussion. Uh, there is also a Zeeman energy which is given by let us call it a E z and which is equal to a mu b sigma dot b. Okay. 
there is of course, uh, one is force, the other is energy. So, uh, this is what we are writing and then mu b is called as a Bohr magneton which has a value uh, 9.27 into 10 to the power minus 24 joule per tesla. Okay. So, uh, now when the uh, electron uh, is subjected to an electric field, then uh, in the rest frame of the electric uh, of the electron, uh, it experiences a magnetic field. So, let me write that. in its rest frame it experiences an effective magnetic field a b effective which is given by minus e cross v divided by c square where c is the speed of light This is electrodynamics. Uh, you can check uh, Griffith's book. Uh, so, that is the effective magnetic field that it experiences, and this gives you an, um, a net, uh, you know, a Zeeman energy which is given by a mu b uh, e cross uh, v uh, divided by c square uh, dot sigma. So, it is b dot sigma or sigma dot b, does not matter. I mean uh, you can write it. Uh, so, this is the, so it is uh, sigma dot b which is nothing but, uh, so this is like uh, mu b sigma dot b effective and b effective appears uh, just on this tape above. So, uh, this E z prime is nothing but the spin orbit coupling term and uh, we can write down, uh, if we write it down in terms of operators then this uh, spin orbit term is written as a uh, mu b over m c square uh, e cross. Uh, now, I make this v as uh, p divided by m and uh, this is written as m c square and there is a sigma dot there. Okay. So, this is the spin orbit coupling term that we are interested in and um, you will see that the Rajpa term looks very similar to that. And uh, what is the origin of E in crystal lattice? So, E is originated by uh, the crystal potential which is given by minus E equal to minus uh, gradient of V where V is the uh, crystal potential. Which is present uh, due to the presence of ionic uh, crystals uh, or ionic sites and so on. Now, what happens is that if you have a, a purely two dimensional sample which our graphene is, uh, then your E becomes uh, in the direction of a z cap. Okay. So, it is in the direction of z cap, this uh, yields a form for the HSO as um, uh, say we write it with the alpha r uh, by h cross and then there is a z cap across p dot sigma. I have changed the um, order of uh, this E and uh, which I have been uh, you know doing it. So, sigma dot uh, this term or this term dot sigma it really does not matter. Uh, so, this is a z cap cross p dot uh, sigma and then all these other things like m c square etcetera they are being absorbed here. So, alpha r by h r is uh, you know it replaces this mu b uh, e z divided by uh, m c square which are scalar quantities. Okay. So, uh, the spin orbit coupling takes this form which is z cap uh, is the direction unit vector in the z direction which is perpendicular to the 2 d plane and um, uh, this is crossed with the momentum and dotted with the uh, the electronic spin. So, uh, here make no mistake that we are really talking about spin by sigma usually when we write the graphene Hamiltonian we denote uh, sigma to uh, represent the sublattice degrees of freedom, but this is a uh, real spin. 
okay you know uh, so there are this alpha r is actually measurable and can also be enhanced uh, by using gate voltage and various kinds of other things uh, such as heavy adder terms like gold etc in a graphene matrix but i'll not go into details of that so typical values of alpha r in um, these la alo3 these are interface of this heterostructures srtio3 etc this has a value it's about 0.5 to 0.6 into 10 to the power minus uh, 11 evm um, whereas uh, for uh, some of the topological insulators uh, alpha r is typically uh, one or two uh, orders of magnitude large and it can have a value which is 10 to the power minus 10 ev meter and uh, this can uh, be further enhanced by using uh, external means uh, will not go into that but how is this relevant for us why we are talking about it why we want to include an additional term as i said that this additional term obeys uh, the time reversal symmetry or rather all the symmetries that graphene has. So, if uh, we add a term which does not violate any of the parent symmetries of graphene, then it might as well be there. Okay? It unfortunately turns out that the magnitude of the spin orbit coupling or that alpha r or the strength of the spin orbit coupling in graphene is quite small. It is of the order of a few MeV. Uh, however, uh, it is still uh, has a fundamental importance in this study of quantum spin hall insulators and the study of spintronics which could be you know next generation devices for uh, with replacing the electronic devices for a number of reasons which I uh, do not want to elaborate here but one of them is that the spins do not undergo joule heating it is not scattered by impurities and so on and uh, hence they could be you know potential candidates for uh, doing uh, a device making. Okay, spintronic device making. So, what happens is uh, that in presence of uh, uh, the spin Rajba term, the velocity of the electrons. Uh, become spin dependent at they are given by so this velocity and uh, I write it with a subscript sigma uh, because uh, now it, it means that it is a spin dependent velocity which means that the up spin electrons will have a different velocity than the down spin electron. This was not the case earlier where uh, the Hamiltonian etc everything was spin independent as if we are talking about spin polarized that is spin does not enter into the discussion. Now, that is not the case. So, this is equal to it is proportional to uh, say a del del k of of this Rashba term uh, let us write it ok right, we are writing it with the SO. So, let me write it with the SO and this uh, is nothing but uh, this is equal to some alpha r uh, z cap cross sigma and now you see that uh, why I wrote it with uh, v sigma because there is a sigma there and so on and this uh, will give you uh, different velocities to different uh, uh, spin uh, components that is up spin and down spin component. So, it is uh, pretty much like you know the Magnus force that one uh, sees in a classical spinning object uh, where there is an effective force on that on there is a and that uh, in this particular case would uh, make uh, these uh, ups and down spin electron separate their uh, ways uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, when they move uh, in a system they will sort of go in different directions and that will create a, a spin current or spin polarized current which uh, depends on spin. So, there will be up spin and down spin will be segregated and uh, also will give rise to a spin uh, uh, sort of voltage uh, and this called as a spin hall voltage because uh, it is not in the direction of the current or the electric field is perpendicular to that uh, and uh, one has uh, so what I am trying to say is that so here uh, you will have up spin say for example and you will have down spin there 
and so there is a spin hall voltage. So, if you calculate a voltage between this and so on. So, this there will be a spin hall uh, voltage and this spin hall voltage can be if it is the magnitude is considerable it can contribute to uh, spintronics. Okay. So, let me uh, do a comparison between the, the Holden model or we, what we call as a churn insulator and this uh, quantum spin hall insulator. So, we will call a churn insulator or same as Holden model. and uh, quantum spin hall insulator QSH insulator and or a same as Ken Milli model. Okay. So, let me make a comparison between the two in terms of a number of things that we have learned so far. It is like a summary of what we have learned. So, uh, we have uh, in no particular order. Uh, so, there are chiral edge states that is electrons move in different directions in uh, opposite sides of the sample and there are helical edge states uh, where uh, they are spin filtered. So, this is one. Uh, so, this spin filtered Second is uh, this is called as a churn number as the topological invariant and that is why they are called as uh, churn insulator. Z2 invariant. Okay. Number three, uh, time reversal symmetry is broken. Which let's call it as TRS is broken. TRS is intact. So we have uh, told about. Uh, the implications of uh, time reversal symmetry. So, it shows a quantum uh, anomalous Hall effect. Shows spin Hall effect. We will show you the spin conductivity or the spin Hall conductance, uh, spin Hall effect quantum spin hall effect. Write it. Quantum spin hall effect and uh, one sees a uh, plateau uh, in the spin hall conductivity at E square over H uh, plateau at E over 2 pi last but not the least of course uh, we have a low energy hamiltonian h equal to h cross vf uh, qx sigma x tau z plus a qy sigma y plus a 3 root 3 t2 uh, which you can call it either a lambda so also uh, sigma z tau z and uh, a similarly a low energy hamiltonian is h cross vf uh, q x sigma x tau z plus a q y sigma y and a plus uh, this 3 root 3 t 2 uh, sigma z tau z s z that is the spin and a plus a lambda r uh, and a sigma x s y uh, tau z minus sigma y s x. Compared to the last slide we had to change these uh, uh, these notations a little because uh, now 
uh, sigma denotes the uh, sublattice degrees of freedom while s denotes the, the actual spin degrees of freedom okay so these are a summary of these two type of insulator and both are uh, very important in their own right okay so here we uh, just show that uh, the graphene only with rashba term there is no uh, holden term and so on so you see that uh, there is just the tight binding graphene and um, uh, and this is the rashba term so uh, you see that uh, there are uh, this semi dirac uh, or semi metallic nature not semi dirac semi metallic nature at the k and the k prime points uh, which uh, also that there is a band touching because without a sigma v or the holden term there will be no lifting of gap but now you see the spin resolved bands okay so it's a gapless scenario there is no gap there even with lambda r not equal to 0 and uh, you have uh, so uh, we have just done a Fourier transform of this and then have uh, plotted this or rather solved this model and plotted this uh, uh, dispersion okay so uh, finally the spin hall conductivity which is um, obtained using uh, so this is the spin hall uh, conductivity with uh, you can call it a s also but uh, it's written with a z because you're talking about the z component of the velocity so this is really the spin hall not the charge hall conductivity which is equal to zero anyway so this is equal to this uh, this is the fermi function uh, which is not important because if you're talking about uh, zero temperature then this is equal to one and this is the Berry curvature and the Berry curvature can be calculated using this formula uh, which is uh, very similar to what you have seen for the Kubo formula and uh, uh, the velocities are calculated from this uh, uh, gradient of the Hamiltonian with respect to kx and ky or uh, you differentiate so for vx you take a del kx and for vy take a del ky. Uh, the only uh, thing that is important is that uh, now these were is the velocity operator but that is not what is used here. You use a uh, Vsi and the z component which uh, requires one to calculate the anti commutation relation of these quantities. So, it is a if you want a Vsx z then you take a Vx and then h cross by 2 as z uh, sigma 0 sigma 0 is simply e over 2 pi. This is just the scale of the uh, conductors okay so um, one does this calculation and uh, of the berry curvature and then put it into the uh, expression for spin hall conductivity let's call it as 1 and 2 so uh, one calculates 2 and then put it into 1 put fermi function equal to 1 uh, at t equal to 0 and um, then you calculate this uh, spin hall conductance and the spin hall conductance uh, comes out to be a uh, very nice uh, you know a form which is uh, it is zero in the vicinity of the Fermi energy. So, this is the bias voltage. So, you are biasing the system and this bias voltage changes the Fermi energy because uh, the electron occupancy is altered as you bias it and you see that there is a very broad plateau in the vicinity uh, of EF equal to zero or zero bias and it is very symmetric and so on. So, this is E over 2 pi that exists for certain range of values of the EF or the bias voltage and um, when EF lies in the gapped region of the dispersion spectrum. So, when EF lies here which is what we have shown earlier if uh, EF say for example, where both are non-zero. So, when the EF lies in this gap and not inside the band then uh, this is a, it gives you a plateau and then uh, as it the plateau sort of uh, goes away and uh, uh, the spin hall conductance becomes um, dispersive or it, it sort of rises um, uh, when the Fermi energy is such that a, it falls uh, within one of the conduction or the valence band. This is exactly the feature that we have seen earlier. Okay and uh, uh, so in this uh, so if lambda r and lambda v are taken from uh, the region outside that is this white region here or here or here or here uh, then of course the, the z2 invariant vanishes and uh, the plateau structure vanishes as well okay so this is by and large uh, what one gets from the ken milli model and uh, the explicit calculations of uh, all the quantities that are of importance are presented here okay 
So, these are um, the helical edge modes that we have shown earlier, but is presented once again. So, these P, Q, R and S are these things here. Uh, so, this is a topological insulator uh, that is a quantum spin hole insulator. So, let me write it as QSH insulator and this is trivial insulator with no edge modes. So, here you are inside the uh, blue region here uh, that light blue region that is sky blue region inside and uh, uh, for the right panel you are outside. Okay. This is what uh, completes the discussion on the Ken Milli model. Let me uh, sort of do a sort of summary slide for uh, the quantum spin hall phase, uh, the mercury telluride and the cadmium telluride quantum wells and uh, the Ken Milli model, just uh, setting up a connection between them. These are some of the people who have uh, contributed immensely uh, on this topic of quantum spin hall insulators. And um, uh, once when uh, the uh, Kane Milli had proposed this model, the, somebody has uh, done an experiment and the person who did that experiment is uh, Molen Camp. Uh, and uh, the theory had been almost immediately proposed by uh, Zhang. So, um, Molen Camp. This is Taylor Hughes uh, and this is uh, Bernevik. So, these uh, people and later on many other people have contributed immensely to the development of the field. So, what happens is that, uh, so there are these uh, two six materials, two six materials uh, which are uh, the semiconductors rather. So, there are these two six semiconductors which uh, are important because these uh, semiconductors have sp hybridization um, and along with uh, uh, these are these have a zinc blend structure. Okay, and um, so they actually uh, belong to the this 12 and 16 columns of these uh, periodic table and you see that there are zinc and cadmium and mercury. Uh, this is what uh, one of the things that are important. I mean, these two are important in this particular context, this cadmium and uh, mercury and uh, this either selenium or palladium. Uh, this is important and so on and then this is what exactly we want uh, to uh, the heterostructures to form or the quantum wells to form with this. So, this is uh, that thing a little uh, blown up. There are these uh, so cadmium and uh, mercury and then there is a this thing that are important and so on. As I said that there is sp hybridization. Uh, so, uh, as opposed to the other uh, the transition metal dichalcogenides uh, uh, Bi2, Se3, etc., where only one orbital uh, is near the Fermi level, there are uh, two orbitals involved in the uh, you know in making up the, the energy levels close to the Fermi level. And um, even though this has been discussed, I mean, in the sense that this is uh, uh, this gamma is actually the uh, the high symmetry point in the Brillouin zone and these gamma is subscripted with uh, these 6, 7 and 8. You see that there is a, a 6 here, there is a 7 here and there is a 8 here. So, the 7 and 8 are uh, split by the spin orbit coupling which is present in this material. In uh, general, this gamma 6 is in the conduction band and gamma 8 is in the valence band which is uh, what you see. So, this is the conduction band in CDT. Uh, this is the conduction band and this is the uh, valence band and which is the conduction band is of course, uh, above the valence band and uh, these uh, uh, gamma 7 even though they are spin split, but uh, they are uh, this gamma 7 is not under consideration because it is far away from the Fermi energy. Uh, very interestingly, the uh, mercury telluride uh, HGT has an inverted structure which is what has been told. and um, here of course, the gamma 6 comes below the uh, gamma 8 and this is what creates all the interesting thing which is what uh, these people who I 
had shown in the earlier slide they have understood and um, uh, this uh, is a closer picture and so on and you see that there is a gamma 6 in the this is AGT and a gamma 8 is up there. So, the and the red line is actually the Fermi energy and you see that this gamma 6 and gamma 8 have an energy which is minus 0.3 uh, electron volt or about 300 uh, milli electron volt. Okay. So, this is interesting and uh, uh, when you make a structure out of it, when you make a uh, you know a sort of sandwich the mercury telluride in between two uh, cadmium telluride slabs, when the mercury telluride start uh, uh, starts uh, you know dominating the phase diagram or dominating the physics, that is when there is a interesting thing happens and uh, this interesting thing is shown here in the lower panel for D less than DC. Uh, you see that there are these uh, blue is the conduction band and this is a valence band and so on and uh, this is the HGTs inside and there are these CDTs outside. So, the electron and the whole uh, bands are shown by uh, blue and red colors and so on and uh, when uh, the uh, width of the well it is uh, increased. So, this way you increase the width of the well and uh, when it happens then a d greater than dc one has um, an inversion uh, of the so the electronic level comes below the uh, hole uh, and that's where so this is a trivial uh, insulator and this is a, a topological insulator uh, or uh, so topological and in particular if we talk about it it is a qsh phase that emerges now, there are a uh, few inputs that one can get from this. Uh, so, uh, uh, for a given thickness D, um, DC uh, which is equal to uh, I believe this is a value. So, what happens is that uh, the electron and the whole bands. they become degenerate. So, uh, this one, uh, so E 1 and H 1 uh, they merge. Uh, so, this is basically uh, shown one uh, electron band and hole band. The, the cartoon picture uh, is uh, it is good enough to in only show one uh, and they merge and then they switch order. Okay? and uh, when they merge that is called as the, uh, the degenerate point and um, this can be exploited in the following sense. Okay? So, at this uh, thickness uh, the E 1 and the H 1 will merge it is less than DC if it is less than DC then U 1 will be higher than H 1 and if E uh, D is uh, greater than DC then E 1 will lie lower than H 1. So, that tells you that if you think in terms of a Dirac type of Hamiltonian, uh, this is like a d dot sigma, uh, then the d z which is the mass term. Okay. So, this d z is you know is uh, less than 0 for a g t e which means it is negative uh, that is why the inverted band structure comes and d z greater than 0 for c d t e. Okay? So, at the degenerate point d z is equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, where one sees uh, the gapless Dirac fermions at the interface. Okay. So, based on this uh, uh, BHZ wrote down a Hamiltonian.
and this is what we have seen uh, that 4x4 four four Hamiltonian and uh, which uh, of course has a, a block diagonal nature uh, comprising of the uh, gamma 6 and the gamma 8 levels which are connected by time reversal symmetry because this has time reversal symmetry. So, they are basically the uh, Kramer's pairs and the spin split uh, Kramer's pairs. Okay? And um, <clears throat> so, in the same spirit, the Kane Milli Hamiltonian is also block diagonal without the Rashba term and um, uh, that uh, gives rise to uh, a spin hall quantum spin hall phase. So, there is a connection between uh, this uh, and the uh, Kane Milli Hamiltonian which also is block diagonal in the uh, in the spin space and one can calculate and that is what we have shown here. Mm -hmm.